Hey guys, welcome, last region of the United States. Here we go. Alrighty, this is our last region of the United States. We are in the West region, so it's all the way over here on the left side. We've already hit all of the other four regions and we are finally into our last one. You'll notice that some of the uh, some of the states here are connected, and then we have these two little stragglers down here at the bottom. They are also part of the west section, but they are not connected like the other two. So let's get started and learn about the west region. Once you are done with this, you will actually have to take a quiz instead of doing your five facts. So you can go back and look through, but pay attention closely. Okay, so here we are, the West region. It has 11 different states. Those are Washington, Oregon, California, Idaho, Nevada, Utah, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and then Alaska and Hawaii. A little bit about the history of the West region. The native people had been living on the land that, become, that became known as the West for at least 14,000 years in some of the areas. Then the Europeans actually made contact and they came over in the 1700s. There were two reasons for a major popular, um, sorry, population increase in the Western states in the mid 1800s. And we already learned about one of these. We know that they started finding gold in California. So all of the people ended up rushing over to California in the West region because they wanted a little piece of that action too. But when they found out that they got there, um, there wasn't much gold left and there wasn't much to be found, but they ended up staying. So the population of California ended up being very large and stayed uh, with a lot of people there. And then there was something called the Oregon Trail that actually brought a lot of people over to the West region as well. Now the climate of the West region is a little bit different because there's a lot of different areas of the West region. And we know that Alaska is one of them. We also know that California and Hawaii are one of them. So a couple of things that we know about Alaska is typically it's kind of cold. And in California, it's more of a moderate temperature, usually really warm. In Hawaii, it's usually sunny and warm as well. So the region is large and very spread out there. So there's a lot of different climates found here in the West. Um, some of the areas like Hawaii and Southern California are very warm. And then the others like Alaska and some of the inland states with the mountains are typically kind of chillier. Uh, some states have both dry, hot deserts and snow covered mountains. So that's kind of interesting. Now, some more about the land. Uh, there's a lot of diversity. That means there's a lot of different types of land there. So we have mountains and volcanoes. We have deserts and then we have glaciers. There's forests and then there's plains and then there's also beaches. So the West region includes 11 states total. Nine are parts of what we call the contiguous connected United States. That means the nine states of the West region are connected. And then there's those two that stick down the bottom, which are Hawaii and Alaska. They're also included in the uh, West region, but they are not connected to the Western states. Um, this one's a little quick, did you know? The fault lines located here cause this region to have a lot of earthquakes. So there's different lines in our in, uh, or earth and there's a lot of hurricanes, I'm sorry, there's a lot of earthquakes that actually uh, happen in this West region. Now the economy is kind of what, what gets the business going. We have fishing, we have shipping, we have farming, there's some ranching there, uh, timber because there's lots of wood, there's technology. We have a lot of entertainment industry out in California. That's where we do a lot of the the entertainment business, um, Hollywood. And then a lot of people like to go visit some of the places in the West region. So there's a lot of tourism there that keeps the money coming in and the economy going well for the West region. Natural resources, again, these are things that can be found in the environment. They come from our earth. We cannot make these. Uh, they have oil, they have metals, they have forests. And then obviously we have some water there. They have these dams that create energy power to um, kind of keep some of the energy going in their region. 
Now, some of the famous landmarks, they are in the West region. So you may be familiar with this special bridge. You may be familiar with this geyser. Okay, so we are gonna learn about a couple different places. I believe this is a jail possibly called Alcatraz too. All right, so the first place we are gonna visit is Montana. Try and move this out. So Montana's name is actually derived from the Spanish word Montaña, meaning mountainous. This name is fitting as the state has over 50 different mountain ranges. I love this fact. Montana is actually the fourth largest state in the United States, but it has the 44th largest population. So that means it is a very, very big state, but not a lot of people actually live there. My parents always joke with us that once uh, we get older and or if we're getting on their nerves, they tell us they're gonna move to Montana so no one can find them. All right, here are some fun facts about Montana. The largest snowflake that was ever observed was actually recorded in Montana on January 28th, 1887. So it was about 15 inches uh, long. So you know a ruler, a foot ruler, is usually 12 inches. So it was a little bit longer than that. So that's a pretty big snowflake. Uh, Montana actually holds the world record for the greatest temperature change in 24 hours. So from January 14th to 15th in 1972, the temperature was actually negative 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it, all, it went all the way up to 49 degrees Fahrenheit, which is still kind of chilly, but that's 103 degrees a change. So that was crazy. I love this picture of the white pelicans. Um, every early spring, there's 10,000 white pelicans with a wingspan of nine feet. They migrate from the Gulf of Mexico to Medicine Lake in northeastern Montana. And then this mountain, Montana mountain goat will butt heads so hard that their hooves actually fall off. So they are kind of so aggressive and they would butt each other with their heads so hard that these little hooves would actually fall off. Our next state is Wyoming. Wyoming is the largest coal mine. It has the largest coal mine in the United States. Um, and it's, loc it's Black Thunder located near the right, near right in Wyoming. That's the city. Uh, this Devil's Tower was designated as the first national monument in 1906. So if you wanted to visit the first national monument, you would go to Montana, I'm sorry, Wyoming, and see Devil's Tower. Now, Wyoming is the ninth largest state but it has the fewest people. So Wyoming is one of a lar another larger state, but it only has 475,000 people that live there. So there is not many people that live there, but the state itself is actually very big. They do get a lot of tourists though, because they have something called Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone National Park has a lot of geysers. This word is geyser right here, it's not geysers. They are um, hot springs that kind of fill up with water and that almost looks like a volcano blast going up. Um, they have more geysers than anywhere else in the world. The water is very, very hot. Um, and there is one called Old Faithful that actually erupts all of the time. Um, I think every hour-ish it erupts. So it's not on a schedule, it's not on time, but they, they do know that it erupts frequently during the day. So a lot of people go and look for that one. Uh, Yellowstone was designated as the first national park in the nation. So we have a lot of different national parks you may visit. The majority of Yellowstone National Park lies within the boundaries of Wyoming, but some of them are actually in Idaho and Montana. And then I thought this was cool because Wyoming was the first state to give women the right to vote. So that is very interesting. The next state we have in the West region is Colorado. I love this fact about their flag. 
The white strip in the middle of the Colorado State flag represents the snow-capped mountains. So I love looking at all the different designs of people's flags and then seeing how they interpret the different things. So remember in Texas, uh, one letter was for each, each one, one point on the star was for each letter, T-E-X-A-S. So there was five points. So this white strip actually represents the snow-covered mountains, which is cool. This is the world's largest flat top mountain. It is called the Grand Mesa. And then in, there's a city in Denver called, uh, I'm sorry, there's a city in Colorado called Denver. We probably know this because of the Denver Broncos, but this is called the Mile High City because its official elevation is exactly one mile above sea level. And this is kind of what it looks like. So you can see the city around this area and then all of the mountains up here, which is super cool. The tallest sand dune in America is in the Great Sand Dunes National Park. These sand peaks were created for the creation of ocean waters and wind. So again, we see that a lot of um, features on our landforms actually are created by some types of wind and erosion in different oceans. Colorado actually has the highest elevation of any state. There's a, with more than 1,000 Rocky Mountain peaks over 10,000 feet high and 54 towering above 14,000 feet. Pikes Peak is the most famous of these mountains. So very, very, a uh, lot of nice features to look at in Colorado, lots of mountains and um, the sand dunes would be a very cool thing to check out too. Utah is our next state. The Winter Olympics were actually hosted here in 2002. Sometimes they are hosted in other parts of the world, but we hosted the Winter Olympics in 2002. Uh, the average snowfall in the mountains near Salt Lake City is actually 500 inches. So pretty snowy up there. Uh, Jello is actually uh, Jello is actually made in Utah, and it's eaten in Utah more than anywhere else in the world. So we call Utah the Jello, the Jello capital of the world. I also thought it was interesting that in 1912 there was a policeman um, named Lester Wire. He invented the first red-green electric traffic lights, and that was in Salt Lake City, Utah. The world's first transcontinental railroad was actually completed at Promontory, where the Central Pacific and Union Pacific Railroads met on May 10th. So if you're my buddy Max, you may have some information on that to share with me too. This bridge is the world's largest national I'm sorry, Nature Bridge. It rises 290 feet above the floor of the Bridge Canyon, and it is 270 feet long. Again, this is a natural bridge. It is made by just the features of the earth. The Great Salt Lake is three to five times saltier than the ocean. Fish free, the lake's largest aquatic critters are brine shrimp. So there's no fish that live there. And if you ever swim in the ocean and you're like, oh boy, that's salty. This lake is actually three to five times saltier than the ocean. And typically lakes are fresh water. So this is a cool, cool place in Utah. Next we have Idaho. It's the 13th largest state. It's called the gem state because nearly every known type of gemstone has been found here. It's also the leading producer of potatoes in the nation, growing about 27 billion each year. Here is another spring. It's called the Soda Springs. It boasts the largest man-made geyser in the world. So we have another type of geyser here that shoots up hot water. One of the largest diamonds ever found in the United States was nearly 20 carats. It was discovered near McCall, Ohio, Idaho. So a 20 carat diamond is a very, very large stone. 
The Shoshone Falls is among the most spectacular of natural beauties along the Snake River. At 212 feet, the falls are higher than Niagara Falls. So when we learned about the Niagara Falls, this is very similar to kind of the Niagara Falls. I'm not exactly sure how these falls were made. I'm not sure if they were made uh, from melting glaciers, kind of like our Niagara Falls, but these ones are larger and higher than the falls. In 1860, farmers began to irrigate the land and plant potatoes. So we know that potatoes have been produced for quite some time, and that is why they are the leading producer of potatoes. We usually say Idaho potato. The world's first alpine skiing chairlift was, and it is still located in Sun Valley. Get this, it was only 25 cents to ride the ski lift in 1936. I'd be curious to see how much it costs these days. Moving along to Alaska, it has 29 volcanoes. It has no plants that are poisonous to touch, such as poison ivy or poison oak. It is the largest state in the union. It's one fifth of the United States. It's twice as big as Texas. So I love this illustration here. Typically we know Alaska is down here kind of, but if we were to put Alaska on the map of the United States, we see Texas being right here. And you can actually see the size of Alaska. They just kind of threw it on the map of the United States so you can see the size of it. So look at the size of it compared to Texas here. It's twice as big as Texas, and it actually takes up one fifth of the whole United States if it was to be a state connected to the United States, which is very, very cool. We don't think Alaska is that large, but it really is. The Northern Lights can be seen on an average of 243 days a year in Fairbanks. I included a um, Northern Lights video for you guys that you can watch to see what these lights really look like. They are not, um, a, a, it's not a light switch that we kind of flip on. It is basically, um, they look like lights that are shining and again it is based on nature and natural natural ways that this does this so out of 365 days they actually show 243 so wouldn't it be cool to be in Alaska and see the northern lights um, you may see thousands of bald eagles in the winter Mount McKinley is 2320 20,320 feet. It's the tallest point in North America. So one of the highest mountain peaks. I love this. In Alaska, every year they host a 1200 mile long trail for sled dog race. It's called the Iditarod Trail um, from Anchorage, a city to Nome. And it's also called the last great race on earth. So if you were interested in learning a little bit more about the Iditarod Trail, it is super cool. It's a, a dog sled race. And you can see how um, they are pulling them and then they have to stop and take breaks. But it's 1,200 miles long. Very, very cool to look up. Our next state is Washington. Uh, the famous Space Needle you may see in Seattle, Washington. Washington State is the flag is the only United States flag with a field of green as well as the only state flag that has the image of a American president. And of course, Washington's flag has a picture of our first president, George Washington. Washington is also the only state named after a president. Seattle was the first American city to actually put police officers on bicycles, which is very cool. Hey, if you're a Starbucks fan, the Starbucks, the biggest coffee chain in the world, was founded here in Seattle in 1971. This is a picture of the first place. On May 18, on May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted, resulting in 57 deaths and billions of dollars in damage. It was a large volcano. 
Washington home. Washington is home to the Boeing, the world's largest aircraft maker. You can see that that is a huge airplane right there. And Washington is number one in the country in the production of apples, pears, red raspberries, spearmint oil, and sweet cherries. I personally love red raspberries, so I am thankful for Washington as well as Starbucks. Our next state is Oregon. Oregon state flag pictures a beaver on its reverse side. It is the only state flag to carry two separate designs. So on the front, you would see this. And on the back, you would see a picture of a beaver. This was formed 6,500 years ago. It's called Crater Lake, and it's the deepest lake in the United States. Hey, if you're a Nike girl or guy, the Nike Swoosh logo was designed by University of Oregon student Carolyn Davidson in 1954. I know I love rocking my Nike shoes around. Sea Lion Caves in Florence is the largest sea cave in the world. So if you love sea lions, go check this out if you're ever in Oregon. The Tillamook Cheese Factory is the largest cheese factory in the world. So they produce a lot of cheese right there. And here are some other facts about Oregon. Oregon has one city named Sisters and another one called Brothers. So there is two cities in there named Sisters and Brothers, which is kind of funny. Oregon and New Jersey are the only states without a self-serve gas station. There is a town called Boring in Oregon. It was, the it was named after William H. Boring of Oregon. So if you want to go check out Boring, Oregon, you can go find it. The next one is Nevada. Here is their state flag, and here's some fun facts about Nevada. It's the driest state in the nation with an average annual rainfall of 9.5 inches. Boy, compared to Pennsylvania or even just Pittsburgh, they are extremely, extremely dry, and they get way less rain than we do. It has more mountain ranges than any other state. Most of the state is a desert, but the Sierra Nevada mountain range near Reno and the Ruby Mountains near Elko actually have snow for half of the year. So even though it's the driest state, some parts of it have snow for half the year. If you want to check out Las Vegas, you can also head to Nevada. About 150 couples get married every day in Las Vegas. And this has, and Las Vegas has more hotel rooms than any other place on earth. Lots of tourists go there. In Death Valley, the kangaroo rat can actually live its entire life without drinking a drop of liquid. I'm sure that's a great adaptation that they learned. And then in 1899, Charles Fay invented a slot machine, machine named the Liberty Bell. In 1999, Nevada had. 205,726 slot machines, and I'm sure it's way more than that is now. All right, California. I have never been to California, but it's on my list, and I want to go check out San Francisco because I would love to check out this bridge. It's considered the world's largest landlocked harbor. You also have Hollywood in California. And I love this fact about William Todd. He designed the original California flag. He was the nephew of Mary Todd Lincoln, which was Abraham Lincoln's wife. If you like raisins, go check out Fresno. It's the raisin capital of the world. And they grow more than 300,000 tons of grapes each year. Also, they have uh, Disneyland in California. So every plant in Disneyland's Tomorrowland is actually edible. You guests are welcome to help themselves to bananas, strawberries, tomatoes, and more, which is super cool. The first McDonald's opened in San Bernardino, California. There is also the tallest and largest living organism in the world. It is called the California red tree. It's right here. Look at the size of this compared to the two children that are standing with their arms spread out wide open compared to that tree. 
So this would be another cool thing if you wanted to look up more. I would love to see more comparisons of that. Also, the gold rush, we know that gold was what brought everyone to California. In 1848, James W. Marshall discovered gold at Sutter's Mill, and then that started the gold rush. Hawaii, another place Miss Glassburner would love to visit. Hawaii islands are formed from volcanic activity. It is the only island state in the United States. So to be considered an island, you have to be covered all the way with water on all four sides of land. Hawaii actually has its own time zone called the Hawaiian Standard Time. The time runs two hours behind Pacific Standard Time. They do not observe daylight savings. So when we kind of turn our clocks forward or behind, they do not. So we know that the West Coast is usually three hours behind us. So for example, if it's 12 p.m. here, three hours behind us in the West would be 9 a.m., but Hawaii is actually two hours behind that. So then it would be 7 a.m. More than one third of the world's commercial supply of pineapples comes from Hawaii. It is the only state that grows coffee. Ah, this was the this was the picture. It was the attack of Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. Um, this was a very, very um, historical attack on the United States. So if you're interested in history, that would be a good one to check out as well. The tallest coconut tree stands in hollow and measures 92 feet and five inches. Holy smokes. By law, no building on the island of Kaua is allowed to be built taller than a palm tree. So you can't have a building taller than any palm tree. There is a lot of different small islands and they're really hard to say in Hawaii. I think this is Auha is home to the world's largest wind generator. The windmill is located on the top of a 20-story tower. And that is it for the West region. So lots of different facts there. Um, you learned a lot of different things about a lot of the different states there. If I had to pick my top hmm, three states, so think about your top three states you would like to visit in the West region. Mine would definitely be Hawaii. I would also love to go to California. And I've been dying to go to Seattle, Washington, too. So those are my top three. What are three places you'd like to visit in the West region? Now, remember, there is a quiz on this. So, for example, if you want to go read the quiz questions first before you watch the video, it may be the best thing to do so you know which ones you're looking for. So um, you can have YouTube up on one screen and maybe another tab for another screen with the quiz. Read through the quiz questions and then you know what you're looking for while we say them in the video. All right, everyone, that finishes up our five regions of the United States and hopefully we can start a mini little project. Take care.